Welcome back to Planet Doug. And this is another experimental testing video for my new camera, the uh, Insta360 ONE X2. But I've taken it to quite a scenic spot in an interesting place. This is the Thai Unity Temple. You can see the name for this temple off to my left. There's a large uh, sign there with the name in Thai. And what I'm doing right now is just walking through the temple grounds at kind of a steady pace. I'm going to go around all the various uh, buildings in here in about 10 to 15 minutes, and that will be the whole video. I won't be shooting separate clips. This will all be shot in one continuous take. And you might be watching one of two different videos because the interesting thing about 360 video, as I've discovered, is that when the camera is running, it is recording 360 video. That's what it does. But you don't have to export and upload 360 video. You could if you wanted to, but you can also take that 360 video, edit it, and then export it as a regular flat 2D video like you would get from any other camera. So that's kind of uh, an advantage I wasn't expecting when I first, uh, first received this gift of a 360 camera. I didn't realize that you could do both and do both so easily. So what I'm doing today is I'm going to post two versions of this video. As I said, I'm walking around the temple right now, recording continuously 360 video, and I'm going to upload that 360 video just as it is. And uh, if you're watching the 360 video, you are in control of what the camera is looking at. I'm not doing anything. I'm just holding the camera in front of me on the selfie stick, and that's all I'm doing. But if you're watching on a smartphone, you can take your phone and you can tilt it up or tilt it down to look around inside the video. You can turn your camera to the right or to the left. You can spin your body completely around in circles. And uh, that will move the camera perspective inside the video. You can also use the touch screen. Wow, they're be beautiful purple very royal guardian lines. I had to stop for a minute to appreciate these and really take them in. This is the centerpiece for this temple, of course. Very dramatic golden stupa. And a very bright sunny day, so it's a beautiful day to come out here. But anyway, on the smartphone, you can also touch the screen and then move your finger to the left or to the right or up and down, and that will also move the camera angle. If you're watching this 360 version of this video on a laptop, um, you have even better options. I find it's better on a laptop. In the top left corner of the screen, you'll see a circle with four arrows on it. And using your mouse or a touchpad, you can click on those uh, arrows and move the view the camera. You can point the camera in any direction you like just by clicking on those uh, arrows. Plus you can use your mouse or your trackpad just to click on the screen and then move to the left or right up and down and just move the camera around anywhere you want to go. Wow! This is a dramatic sight on a day like this. I'm so glad that I came out here today. It was kind of an impulse decision when I saw how nice the weather was. And they have a uh, fish pond here, quite a large one. I see a bunch of people on the bridge feeding the fish. Last time I was here, I thought originally the uh, fish feeding station was broken, like where you got your fish food, but it turns out it does work. So maybe I can get some fish food later on too. So that's the 360 version of this video that I've uploaded, and I will label it as 360. But I'm also going to take that 360 video, and then I'm going to do what they call reframe it in the editing program. 
So I'm going to take that 360 video and in the editing program, I am going to control the camera angle and make my own choices about what to point the camera at and then export that as a 2D uh, flat video. Wow, beautiful building. I'm going to go inside so we can see how the camera handles these uh, darker conditions. It's quite dark in here, especially compared to outside. They have a lot of interesting, uh, very uh, like Hindu style uh, statues in here. And there's also a, a second floor, so we can walk up to the second floor and walk around the uh, stupa on the outside. That's what I'm going to do now. But with the uh, reframed video, I'm going to put a big label on it that says reframed. And then if you watch, if you're watching that video, it is just a regular 2D video. You can't move the camera around. I've done that for you in editing. And you can just sit back and uh, watch the video as it plays. And the advantage to that, of course, is you don't have to do anything. But the disadvantage is you are restricted to seeing what I choose to show you when I did the reframing. And uh, in a 360 video, a true 360 video, you have control and you can look everywhere you want, which uh, I think is kind of interesting. So that is what is going on. And I'm also playing around with the audio because I found that even with the Rode Wireless Go microphone plugged into the One X2, the audio quality is not very good. And that's putting it mildly. It's quite bad in my opinion, even compared to connecting the Rode Wireless Go to a GoPro. The audio quality strikes me as uh, quite inferior. And that's a big problem with this uh, 360 camera from uh, Insta360. I think they need to improve their audio. But since I'm shooting one continuous video, it's just one video clip, it's not that difficult to replace the audio track and to sync it. So I'm also recording audio on a GoPro. I have the GoPro on my uh, chest mount, on a chest harness. So I'm recording on my GoPro at the same time, but I'm not really intending to use the video from the GoPro. I'm just going to extract the audio and uh, replace the Insta360 One X2 audio with the GoPro audio and then sync it up. If the Insta360 audio, you know, is uh, as poor as I expect it to be. So that's the second uh, floor of this temple. Wow. From up here, you get a nice view of the countryside, farming area, and those are the mountains, uh, the hills separating Mesot from uh, Tax City. You have to go in that direction and over those hills to move from here, you know, the border of Myanmar into the uh, interior of Thailand. So this is the uh, centerpiece of uh, this temple complex, as I said, the Thai Unity Temple. Now I'm going to go down the stairs and make my way around some more of this uh, temple complex. The funny thing is that by shooting this video the way that I'm doing it, I made my life quite complicated. So I was sitting out in the parking lot, setting up the Insta360 camera and my GoPro and two separate microphones all at the same time with two mounting systems, you know, one for the uh, One X2, one for the GoPro, two microphones. It was all very complicated. Probably took me 45 minutes just to get the cameras set up and then test them and, and do the, you know, make sure they're all working. And uh, it's like 45 minutes of just setting up the camera for shooting a 10 minute video. <laughs> Almost makes me a uh, professional. 
Oh, which way shall I go? I haven't planned my route. Got a man here who's uh, carving. very interesting to see that because you know here's an example of a completed carving just ahead of me and uh, yeah it's so elaborate it's hard to believe that someone just took out a hammer and a chisel and a knife and carved all of that you know people who can do these sorts of things are like sorcerers to me, you know, they have a, a skill, a talent that I can't even imagine, to be honest. And this is the temple's Ubosat, and we know that because it is surrounded by, I believe, eight Sima stones. There's a Sima stone directly in front of me. I'm going to walk around the uh, Ubosat and you should find a Sima stone, one on every corner and one on every side. And I think that makes for a total of eight. Here's a Sima stone on one side and uh, quite a nice Buddha statue on the other. And this is something that I always enjoy at these temples. They often have a series of stone boulders quite large and heavy ones. And the tradition with these is to take gold foil and rub the gold foil onto the boulder until it sticks. And here they also put coins on the top. Let's go inside. It's a temple building just for a minute. I don't think there's anyone inside, so it won't be disturbing anyone. Yeah, quite an elaborate set of statues and lights and other items here at the front. Wow, look at that, there's a full green jade statue off on the right. I didn't notice that the other time that I came here. But, uh, there it is. It's probably not, you know, solid jade, of course. It's a type of green glass, but it certainly uh, has a very striking look to it. And yeah, a lot of uh, a variety of Buddha statues here. Quite an elaborate temple. Probably my favorite in, in the whole Mesot area. This has so many different buildings, so many things going on, different ways that you can participate and gain merit, you know, such as these uh, gold foil leaves. You make a small donation and you can take one of these leaves and write a message on it and hang it up and as the wind blows over them. Good merit is uh, coming to you. Same thing with these bells that are hanging from the uh, ceiling, from the ropes up above. There's another area underneath the roof here. Pond with a uh, 
Naga statue in the middle. Oh, I remember now when I was here before, I saw a sign as I came in saying something about cats, wild cats. And it showed photographs or, or drawings of the cats attacking and even killing dogs. And um, I wasn't quite sure what was going on with that, uh, with those signs. But people in the comments suggested that what they were saying is, um, please don't leave your, uh, dogs here. Like unwanted dogs, I guess, are often left at temples. If a family doesn't want the dog anymore, they're moving, they will bring the dog to a temple and just leave it here and hope, of course, that the temple monks will care for it or that visitors to the temple will feed it. But I guess uh, they were trying to discourage that practice. And uh, they were saying that uh, basically there's a lot of cats here and they don't get along with any dogs that you leave here. So uh, don't leave your dog here. It could be uh, attacked by our resident cats. Something like that. But uh, I did see a few cats when I was here last time and they didn't seem to be particularly aggressive or have anything against the dogs. There were a couple of dogs here too, and the dogs and cats seemed to be coexisting happily. Got an interesting uh, Buddha statue here. And uh, this may be where I end the video. I think I've been uh, shooting for over 15 minutes now, about 17 minutes. And I don't want to go any further, any longer than that. So, here with this view of this statue, a little bit of a view of the countryside, and then this view back into the interior of the temple. Yeah, this seems like an ideal place to end this video. Yeah, you've got that gorgeous golden structure there. And then a more ornate, like silver ornate building on, on the left there. And uh, let me raise my 1x2 as high into the air as I can get it. And try and give kind of an aerial view of the whole area. I feel like I need to get one of those extended selfie sticks. They have them that are twice twice as long as this one or even three times as long. But uh, maybe in the future. So that's it for the Thai Unity Temple. Whether you're watching the uh, 360 version or the reframed version, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next video.